I personally am all for it. Um, okay, just uh, pretty much the same thing they did with um, quarter horses and paints, you know, and thoroughbreds back mm-hmm. in uh, the 80s. Uh, you know, it, it, it's it would be a much easier road for the dogs and the breeders mm-hmm. um, to do something like that. Unfortunately, pretty much anyone else um, who's breeding Spanish Mastiffs at this point, it's such a huge no for them. And it's like, man, you know, um, personally, I would um, I, I, I would do it in a heartbeat if, you know, um, uh, because I truly believe that is the quickest course and most effective course uh, to fixing this issue. Um but right now, it's like so taboo. It's just crazy, and it's like I again. I I always go back to oh, the dogs probably don't care. Um, you know, it, it's and, and I understand the need. You know, the need for preserving that. But you know, there are other LGD breeds that don't have these issues, or at least it's not as prevalent. Um, that have the same characteristics because let's face it, all LGD breeds. Um, at first, you know, in the beginning, they all did the same job. Mm-hmm. Okay, it wasn't until they got to the United States that they got, you know, that you get peers that bark and, and, and you know, Anatolians that won't stay home and all that other, you know, crap that you hear all the time. Um, but if you actually could do that with a dog that, you know, that shared those characteristics, those personality traits and everything, I would be all for it. Just because, like again, you know, I think we would end up with fewer dogs you know with dysplasia that are in pain by the time they're three or four years old Mm -hmm. when you have dogs that can't procreate on your on their own Mm -hmm. that's not breeding stock that's not breeding stock Mm -hmm. you know i understand a i mean you know if it's across the country or something and it's a proven dog you know but i i don't understand a lot of what goes on you know, now with just, I mean, that's just the way some dogs are bred. I know my brother had French bulldogs and it was like, I think they had AI and C-section everything. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. And it was like, <laughs> then maybe you need to, maybe you need to alter, you know, something about your breeding program or something. I don't know. I, it just seems to me like uh, if the dogs can't, couldn't make it on their own, you know, and, and, and couldn't procreate on their own, you know, as a complete breed, that's an issue. You you might want to, you know, again, like what you were saying, cross over with something that can and, and, and you know, retrieve some of those abilities. I, I don't want my dogs to weigh, you know, 200 plus pounds. They, they just, that's a lot of weight to have to carry around. It's going to depend on, you know, what's what people want. And um, my experience so far with these dogs has been a lot of times um, they want what they want and you can talk health issues and, and you know, uh, characteristics with them all you want, but they want what they want. And, you know, and it's usually based on looks. So uh, I, I have I have my concerns, to say the least. And in fact, I have some and, and have bred some of, you know, some that are heavier, a heavier build, have a little more skin. Um, as, but my, my point is, is they just, they have to be able to, they still have to be able to do their job. And if they can't, it becomes a danger to them. Mm -hmm. Um, and a danger to your flock as well. So, um, you know, that, that's where I'm, that's where I'm coming from with, you know, and I'm, and I'm talking specifically within LGD breeds Mm -hmm. when I say that, because, they, you know, they have to be able to, you know, perform certain, in, in a certain way. Um, hopefully, you know, your dogs never have to engage, you know, and, it, and normally if you have enough of them, you, they don't. Uh, most predators, you know, predators go to the easy meal. They don't, they don't really want are you know, coming to look for a fight and no. where they're going to get hurt. So, um, you know, that's another, that, that's another aspect, you know, make sure that you have enough dogs. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's with any breed, you know, I, it, it's like, I don't believe in the hybrid vigor, you know, theory mm-hmm. simply because if you breed two unhealthy dogs, it doesn't really matter what breed they are. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, you know, you just, so you have to, you know, you have to do your research, mm-hmm. have to do your due diligence and, and, um, you know, it, 
but I think it could be done and I think it could be done really well if people, um, did their research, um, chose dogs based on, you know, uh, on, on the criteria that they needed, you know, and that their dogs needed rather than, you know, on any, any other criteria. And if they were open about it, Mm -hmm. you know, you have to, that's the, the biggest thing I see in the, in, in the entire dog world, you know, um, specifically speaking, and I'm sure it's in other, you know, species too, you know, people don't want to be open about their animals if they have a problem with them or whatever, you know, um, and, and it's really important to do that. And I understand that some people freak out and panic, you know, if they hear, oh, your dog had this happen or whatever. But if you do that, then you can address the problem and, and at least minimize it, if not eliminate it. And until you're, until people are willing to do that, you know, there's just going to be issues. You know, the less disparity there is between those two, those two, the show and working type. I mean, this is, you know, this discussion has been going on forever as far as I can tell as long as people have been exhibiting dogs but the less disparity between them the better off you know everyone is really yeah um you know and 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 again it goes back to you know it it would be lovely if there was just a good middle ground that everybody could agree on Mm -hmm. they're one of the most um communicative dogs I've ever owned um, now I, I've had, I, I did have one pit bull in particular that was, that was very much like that. Um, but overall, um, they're super just like, they're just, they're kind of in tune with everything. They're, they're usually pretty confident dogs. Um, and they just, uh, sometimes it's like they almost know, you know, before you ask them to do something. Mm-hmm. It, it, again, except recall, if they decide that there's a threat off across the field and you call them back, they usually don't come. Um, mm. <laughs> occasionally, I can get them to hesitate and turn around and look at me, and then they go, nah, you know, <laughs> take off. Um, but uh, it's just, it, it's it, it's kind of hard to really describe. They just, they're just really good. They're awesome company. They're, like, kind of up for anything. Um most of them, some of them, some of them aren't. I have some that I'll open, you know, the, the back of my vehicle and they jump right in and say, let's go for a ride. And others that see me open the back of the vehicle and go to the end of the pasture because they don't want anything to do with that. Um, but uh, they're just, uh, they're really great, you know, companions, but they're also really great guardians. And so, you know, I spend hours just sitting out with them, you know, and the sheep and the goats and stuff and just watching and, um, you know, they're just um, really easy dogs. I guess that's the best way to put it. Mm-hmm. They're just easy. Um, no, I think they're pretty similar. They're very nurturing. I have, um, you know, mostly the older ones. Um, you know, when a you goes to lamb, one of the dogs will follow her and stay with her. Um, usually if any of the younger dogs comes up while that's happening, they'll growl them off. Um they'll allow them to stand back but you know they're really nurturing um you know i've had uh you know lambs that moms reject and stuff and you know i've got several dogs that'll just cuddle up with them and keep them warm um and you know just kind of become mommy you know bring them up to the fence when it's time to give them their bottles and stuff so you know they're uh but you know again i think that's that's most lgds that's that's kind of you know part of that group of dogs Mm -hmm. i think most of them will do stuff like that okay so no lgd should be roaming that's that's a problem that we that is pretty specific to the u.s Mm -hmm. that is that is a breeding issue that is not a breed that's not a breed issue it's a breeding issue people have been um you know they don't you don't breed a dog that takes off like that i would never breed if if one of my spanish mastiffs was a wanderer that dog would get spayed or neutered Mm-hmm. because that's they're, they're never supposed to do that. Mm-hmm. Their job is to stay with their flock. They're not supposed to hunt predators. Mm-hmm. You get hounds for that. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, no, that's not their job. Their job is to stay with their flock and to guard it and to protect it if they need to. But it is not their job to go out chasing the, you know, predators across the countryside. Mm-hmm. Um, I see people constantly posting on Facebook groups, oh, little floofers, you know, first kill. And it's like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> right. um, you know, it's it, it's like, uh, yes, if uh, I, 
I would expect my dogs to, you know, engage with a, with a coyote or a pack of coyotes if they got, you know, if they got into onto my property. But I, you know, I don't expect them to chase them two miles down the road to kill them either. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they need to know their boundaries. And um, that, again, like I said, that's bad breeding. That's all that is. Um, um, for instance, okay, so again, like I said, I have crappy fencing. Most of my dogs can get over it any time they want it. They don't. Um, we have, because we're in the desert, of course, we have um, probably, you know, I don't know how thousands of coyotes in the area. My dogs have pretty much, when we moved here, I'll never forget the night um, we closed on the house. And we were leaving, and I happened to look left down this dirt road, and I saw just a line of eyes. <laughs> um, that were, you know, coming down the road. And I was like, oh, hell, I told my husband, I said, we have a ton of coyotes here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he said, it'll be all right. You know, and it was. And, you know, it's it's really interesting because at this point when the coyotes start yipping, they, they don't bark at them, but, it, you know, they'll like start howling. Mm-hmm. And um, they never, I don't, I haven't seen a coyote in I don't know how long. You know, like I said, they just, I, I haven't ever had one leave. I, um, you know, I have, in order to get in and out of this place, I have two big, huge gates that I have to drive, you know, through open and throw the gates open. The dogs are there. They could leave anytime they wanted while I was driving through. They don't. What other kind of dogs do you own, you said? Um, okay, well, I have an elderly Scottish Terrier. He's 14. Um, a Corgi that I inherited from my son because... He seemed to think that uh, he would be a good uh, couch potato dog. And, uh, no. Oh, no, he ended up. He called me one day and said, "Come get this son of a bitch. He's he's biting everybody." <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, so he's here now. We've had him for five years. Um, I have a Spanish Mastiff Anatolian Cross. Um, I have a Pyrenean Mastiff, Great Pyrenees Cross, a purebred Pyrenean Mastiff. Uh, what else do I have? Well, I think that's, I think that's all of them, other than my Spanish mastiffs. So, what is the uh, Spanish mastiff Anatolian cross like? She was one of the most fabulous dogs, and still is, that I have ever owned. Okay, she, um, she was um, one of my first livestock guardian dogs, um, and uh, she has literally trained almost all of my. Spanish Mastiffs. Like I said, she pretty much ruled out there. She's mine now. Uh, she's the one in here that's snoring on my floor. <laughs> um, <laughs> and she still she still likes to think that she runs things out there. Uh, so she'll wander out, you know. Um, but I mean, uh, the five-year-old male that I have, I can remember her pushing, you know, literally uh, putting him into a corner and then taking a nap. And every time he'd try to move from that corner, she'd pop her head up and bare her teeth at him and make him sit back down because yeah. he'd been chasing the lambs. <laughs> awesome. she was, yeah. She was just, she was just an awesome dog. So yeah, I, I really actually am in love with that cross. There are a few people, you know, that are up and coming, you know, that have got some young dogs and stuff that are doing their health testing and stuff totally behind them i'm i'm you know i i'm really um i'm really optimistic about that you know Mm -hmm. uh it's not all bad i know i kind of sound doom and gloom uh, but uh, it's not all bad there are some you know and and hopefully you know they'll continue to be transparent with what they're doing and stuff and you know and and they'll continue the good work they started um and that would be a really good thing. And again, you know, uh, also I would love it if, you know, there were more people that actually were open to the idea, you know, of possibly crossing with another LGD breed just to improve, you know, joint health. Mm-hmm.